Welcome to the next episode of ADs Rx for MD. I'm so glad you chose to join me today. We are going to be talking about a big topic, application timeline. Okay, so the very first thing you need to know is you definitely need to apply the year before you plan to enter four years of undergrad and then go straight into med school. That's what a lot of people prefer. So in that scenario, you would need to start applying your junior year and there's a lot of stuff that you have to do along the way to be ready for that how many schools should you apply to so that is a very personal decision a lot of advisors will say go for 30 40 schools some people can't afford to do all of that so the cut and dry answer is it depends on your circumstances i know that is not what you want to hear personally i applied to 13 schools but if you do want to apply to a lot of schools and you have financial restrictions there is a fee assistance program that allows i think you to apply to up to 20 schools also your mcat fees are either reduced or waived but i'll have the actual information in here somewhere so after i kind of figured out how many schools people typically apply to and how many you typically get interviews from just those percentages were like kind of scary so after talking to that advisor i was like okay i want to apply to at least 10 schools some of the things that you should consider when you are choosing a school so location honestly is important how close are you going to be to your family or your med schools actually like to see that you have a support system and they want to know that you have people around you that are going to help keep your spirits lifted we want to look into unique things that the schools offer our lectures mandatory if you're someone who doesn't learn very well from lectures you might not want to go to a school where lectures are mandatory is it in an environment or a climate you can really be successful in um, some people really just like get depressed in the winter and cannot function if you know for a fact i'm not going to be able to do it you might not want to go somewhere where there are harsh tough long winters so generally speaking from the med students that i've spoken to that cutthroat aspect that a lot of times is very prevalent in pre-meds tends to not be as prevalent in med school but it can be so that's something you want to consider what is the student environment the learning community are people cooperative if that matters to you that's something you can think about step scores you know if their average step score is below the national average that's something you want to consider now off of that let's talk about the actual timeline there is a recommended timeline okay so I am referring to the Kaplan Med School Admissions Timeline. On here they have an ideal timeline where they think you will have the most success. And then there's a possible timeline. And then I'm going to talk about my timeline. So they recommend, let's just say you want to enter in the fall of 2022. They recommend that January, February, March, and April through May is when you should be planning to take your MCAT. So that would mean that this year, Either you've already taken your MCAT or you're planning to take it within the next few months. Um, most people recommend at least two months of dedicated studying for the MCAT. That's what I did. After you take the MCAT um, is when you want to be submitting your primary. Now, according to the ideal timeline, uh, Kaplan recommends that you submit your primary in May or June. The earlier on the admissions committee see you, you do have a greater chance of being accepted um, because they have a lot more spots. Once you start getting towards the end when there's 10 spots left, they're gonna be a lot more picky about who they are choosing for those spots. Receiving secondaries July through, looks like maybe mid-September. Um, and then interviews are expected to come in September through January of the following year, so now uh, we've moved into the year you actually want to enter and then from there, you know, decisions are made. Now they do have another category here, the possible timeline, which is not the ideal one, but they feel like you still have a good chance of being accepted. So for that one, it would be taking the MCAT between June and September, um, then submitting your primary somewhere between June and December, 
um, submitting secondaries between like September and January and then interviews coming February through April. You are going to have to look at your schools and what their primary application deadlines are and create a document where you keep track of each of the or the application deadlines for the primary and secondary applications. Now we are going to talk about what my timeline was. Um, I was not at all within the ideal timeline. I don't recommend you deviate too far from it. I had a few things along the way that I considered that sort of pushed me back. I wanted to really give myself enough time to have dedicated focus study for the MCAT two whole months. You'll notice in the ideal timeline, you're gonna be taking the MCAT when you're still working on the schoolwork. And if you can balance those two, then go ahead and do it. But I felt like pursuing two degrees, being heavily involved in campus life, and trying to study for the MCAT was not gonna go well. So I said, I need to wait until I'm done with school and then I will focus on the MCAT. So Lee and I took the MCAT at the end of July. Here with COVID, things had a shorter turnaround time. So I think I got my score back within like two weeks, but typically it's gonna take about a month or more. So you definitely wanna consider that in your timeline. You will not be able to submit a complete application until you have that score. Another thing that was different about this year was that um, schools had like preliminary acceptance policies without MCATs, assuming you were going to send a good MCAT score in. So my situation is a little bit different than other people's. I'm not sure how long these provisions are going to last. It just depends on how the pandemic um, continues to develop. I got a little bit behind because I didn't quite understand the personal statement. Like I had a personal statement and I thought it was good, but when I started getting feedback on it, I realized, okay, what I have here is a nice like college essay, I guess, but this is not effectively communicating what I need to communicate for being accepted to medical school. So I submitted my applications like beginning or mid-September, my primary application, um, and then I waited for secondaries. Most of them I did get back by September, uh, yeah, no, I got them all in September, and I did not hear back from a school until the first week in February. And I got two interview invites kind of back to back within the same week. Um, so here we are. Now let's get into some of my tips for applying to medical school. So for one, get started very, very early, as early as possible so that you can do like little tasks along the way and you don't feel pressured to get it all done. And then the thing that really like pushed my application back by like two or even three weeks was that personal statement. I really recommend you start your personal statement as early as like April of the year before. Just your ideas, jot down your ideas. It can just be bullet point, just the direction you wanna go and little by little just work on it over time. Now, simultaneously with just collecting your ideas for your personal statement, I recommend you start working on like the academic section of the AMCAS application because it's just tedious. Like, even though you submit your uh, transcript, you still have to go in and list every single class you took, when you took it, what your grade was, the credit hours. It's annoying and you don't want to have to do that at the end. So my next piece of advice for applying is as soon as you finish one like phase of your application, start on the next one. As soon as my primary was submitted, I started looking at potential secondary prompts for all of the schools I applied to. Um, and you can go to secondaryapps.com to find this. There's an exhaustive list of the prompts that each school used the year before. Most schools are not gonna change those prompts or they're not gonna change them very much. The exception for us this year was questions about COVID and how it impacted you. But that you can have enough time to write something, to critique it, to have someone else critique it, to do grammar checks, everything, and then it's ready to go. And this kind of goes into my next tip is a lot of people will say, try to submit your secondary within two weeks of uh, receiving it. Um, the person who advised me said, go for one week. But honestly, I stayed under one week for all of my schools because because I had my pre-written secondaries that had already been proofread, that had already been adjusted and edited and were 
exactly how I wanted them to be. So you submit your secondary applications, um, start collecting a list of potential questions that you could be asked in an interview. The types of questions you wanna look at are like growth questions, introspective questions. Start doing research on the school so that you have a very solid answer to the why do you wanna go here question. Personally, I had like four to five reasons for each school. After you are done with your secondary, it's really just up, up to the school. Well, I have a few general facts that I guess I forgot to mention that you need to keep in mind. Um, when you are choosing your schools, you need to look at whether or not they require the CASPER test. Like what in the world is CASPER? It's nothing to be stressed about, so don't worry. All CASPER is is an assessment of empathy and ethics. I think would be the main two. What's gonna happen is you are going to be given a scenario then you have a certain amount of time to type out a response. And they basically wanna see, you know, are you gonna act impulsively? Um, are you going to be fair? Casper, you don't really have to study for. I would say just do one practice test so you get used to the time frame you have to formulate your answer and type it all out. A lot of schools aren't requiring this anymore, but some still do. So the next thing is there's a verification process after you submit your primary application that can add anywhere from one week to two months to how long it takes for your application to be considered complete. If you submit your application, someone has to go in and actually look at your entire application, make sure all your classes are right, make sure it matches with your training. Transcript, yeah. Okay, I'm just realizing I lied. I forgot everything. So I actually submitted my primary application at the beginning of August. So this is further making my point. The app wasn't verified until September, about a month later. So I would always recommend that anyone follow your pre-med advisor or just like Kaplan or AAMC, follow those timelines. I wanna really communicate that if you do get to the point where you're not able to submit your application as early as you wanted to, you're not doomed, okay? There was a lot of information we talked about here. I'm tired, you guys are probably tired, um, but that's just kind of like the overview of the process and I am going to do like, uh, specific videos breaking down different sections of the MCAS application. So just leave comments down below of what you want to see. Like, comment, subscribe, and share for sure. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.